Hi everyone, welcome to our A to J author and new user training. This is Jessica Frank with the Center for Access to Justice and Technology. Before we get started today, just a reminder that you all are on mute. If you have a question, just raise your hand and we can put, uh, and put it in or put it in the question box. If you don't have a microphone, you can put your comments in the question box as well and I will get to those um, at the end of the presentation. If you are calling in today by phone, make sure to enter your audio pin to be heard. And this session is being recorded and will be posted on our A to J Author YouTube channel, which is just youtube.com slash A to J Author. Today's topic is A to J Author Exit to Save. On the agenda, we have a little um, thing we're going to do. We're going to walk through the process of how it works, what it looks like to your end user when they are saving their, inter their answer file from an A to J guided interview. Then we'll talk about the setup. Then we'll have to talk about some considerations to think about when you are deciding to use this feature and additional resources um, in our A to J author authoring guide to help you if you forget anything you learned today. So how it works. Um, this feature gives users the option to leave an incomplete A to J guided interview and save their answers on the LHI national server. They um, can leave the interview at any time, even if they haven't completed it, but this feature is not enabled automatically. We will talk later uh, about how to enable it, but it isn't automatic when you open it at the interview. This also only works on LHI right now. They are the only ones with the capacity to allow um, users to create accounts and save their answers. So for those of you out there who might be hosting your own A to J guided interviews, those like online intake, e-filing, or guided interviews that don't produce a document, um, this isn't an option for you unless you configure your server to allow um, saving answers. And this is an option that you, the author, have to enable. Again, we'll talk about that later. This feature, when you enable this, the exit button, well, the exit button will then appear in the top gray navigational bar for the entire interview, from, step, from the first question and the first step all the way to the end. So at any point, they can leave. When the end user clicks the exit button, they're actually taken to one last question in the guided interview. And I like to call this the, are you sure you actually want to exit question. This is where you explain to the end user that they're leaving the interview. You can explain the process. Here I explain that they are going to be directed to another website where they will be able to create an account and save their answers, um, and then they will be able to return to this interview later. I also let them know that if they've made the mistake, maybe they were just um, clicking around and hit that exit button by accident, I give them the option to return to the question from where they had clicked that exit button. And then if they want to leave immediately, they can just click the exit. This is the last check for your end user to make sure they actually want to leave and save their answers. They may always just realize that it's too much of a hassle and they just finish the interview and click the return button. So here is the first screen that the end user will get to after clicking that exit in the are you sure you actually want to exit question. This is the LHI landing page. It's the done answering questions page. Here on the right you can see the end user can save their answers or can actually choose to go back to the questions. When they click save their answers, this screen pops up, or this option pops up. Here they can log in if they've already created an LHI account, or they can create a new one by signing up. If they click sign up, they're taken to the um, the sign up page where they select that they are self-helper. This might look familiar to any of you who are out there doing template development because this is the same sign in page or sign up page that we use when we're creating our developer accounts on LHI. So the end user would pick the self-help, self-helper option, create a username, create a password, enter their name, email address, and the state they are in, and then they agree to the terms of service and sign up. Once they sign up, they are taken to this screen where, or this is also after they log in, if they've already signed up, then they can save their answers with a file name and a description. 
in that yellow box, it's pre-populated with a file name based on the date, but they can always change their file name. In the description, they can also um, add what the interview that they were filling out the answer set was, when it was, any information that they want to add. Once they've saved their answers, they can view all of their saved answer files under their My Account Manage Your Answers. So under this account that I created this morning, I only have one saved answer set, but the end user could have um, many answer sets if they've um, done this more than once or if they're an experienced end user that they use guided interviews a lot. They'll have a whole list of answer files. They can share their answers, so perhaps they start working with a legal aid attorney later on and they want to share their answer file, they can go ahead and do that tells you what date it was created, when it was last modified, and it also allows them to delete their answer files and clean up their account. To start the A to J guided interview from a saved answer file, the user just goes back to your website, wherever you have put the link to the guided interview. They click it again, and they are taken to the standard screen where if they were starting over brand new, they would click proceed in the yellow box. Instead, because they have signed in, they have saved answer files, they can um, sign in, log in, and once they log in, they'll be given a list of their answer files, and they will just be able to double click it, and it will launch the interview, um, starting with those unanswered ones. So um, let's go to LHI, and I will show you um, what I need. Okay, so if we go into, this is Illinois Legal Aid Online's website. I'm in the Forms Library, and I have started an answer file for a fee waiver in Cook County. This is one of our most popular um, A to J guided interviews for Cook County, at least, that our students help people with a lot at the Self-Help Web Center. So here we are. If I was starting over brand new, I would click proceed. And, but because I have saved answer files, I'm going to log in as if I was the end user. Click proceed. And now I have my option, all of my answer files. Again, I only have the one, but if I had multiple, I could start fresh, or I could click through and pick the saved answer file that I want. This one I created this morning, and it launches me right back into the A to J guided interview. And here you can see this is taking me back to the question that I left on. So uh, when I got to this question, I clicked exit, and I'll show you how that works. I clicked exit, and it took me to that, are you sure you want to quit question. So when I come back, it takes me right back. It doesn't take me to the beginning. It takes me to the question that I left on. So you can see in the drop-down menu, I've already answered. 13 or 12 other questions, and now I'm on the telephone question. Going back into our presentation, how to set it up. So in A to J Author, this is a picture of the back end of A to J Author. You, can, you need to create one question that is not linked to any of the others in the A to J Guide, guide Interview. So you can see here, this, bot, this question that is circled in red is, does not have any lines attaching to any other question. It is a standalone question. It has two buttons, a return and an exit. And remember, this is not automatically enabled for every guided interview. It's your choice as the author whether to allow end users to exit and come back later. If it's a short interview, you might want, not want to give them that option. So it's up to you and you have to enable it. For the return button option, you need to select exit resume interview as the destination question. And that will take the user out of the exit to save process back to the question where they started. The exit resume interview and the back to prior question, those are both two destination questions. Um, that you could send your end user. They sound like they're the same thing, but they are absolutely not interchangeable. So this is an important one to remember. 
In a standard interview, if you wanted to allow someone to go back to a prior question, you would select back to prior question. In the exit to save feature, you cannot select that. Um, when the end user selects exit from that top gray bar in the interview, they are taken out of the main interview and into a special exit um, kind of pathway. So back to prior question won't work to take them back to that question. You need to select exit, resume, interview to take them back to the question from where they selected um, the exit button at the top of the gray. This will make a little bit more sense when we go back into the A to J author software, but I want to give you a little bit preview. For that, so we have the return button and we have the exit button. The exit button, the destination question is exit, save, and complete form. This triggers the LHI page where the user can start the save your answer process. So this um, tells A to J author to tell LHI to enable that save your answer feature. And at the bottom of the um, main authoring screen, we have our starting point question and you need to fill in the exit point question. So you identify that single standalone, are you sure you really want to exit question as the exit question below the question list. Once you put a question in that um, field, the question, the exit button will then appear in the interview itself. The exit to save question is identified in the A to J author flowchart with a couple of unique symbols. The question itself has a gray exit circle above it. It's not connected to any other question, so you won't see any lines attaching it. The um, Return button has a gray white resume circle and the exit button has a green yellow exit circle. So if you have an interview with a um, hundred different questions, these unique symbols will help you know where your exit question is in your flowchart. So if we go into A to J author. I have an interview here where I added an exit question. So as you can see, in my flowchart, this question right here on the right is not connected to anything. So take it. Now you can see this question alone. I've zoomed in on my flowchart. Like I said, it has that circle, the gray exit, indicating that this is the, the exit question. It has two buttons, return and exit. The exit is green and yellow circle. The resume is the gray white circle. We go into this question. In the text, I have um, just told them they're exiting the interview, they're going to another website, they make a mistake, click return. Um, if they actually want to leave, click exit. The two buttons are return and exit. Return as the destination question has exit, resume interview, which is different than back to prior question. So exit, resume interview. The exit button has the destination question of exit, save, and complete form. We preview, let's close this and go to a different question. So if I'm entering my name, I'm at the very start of my interview. My exit button is enabled. If I start typing and continue, oh, I decided actually I want to exit here. It takes me to my exit question, return, takes me back to the question I was at. Exit would take me into LHI. This isn't uploaded on LHI, so this is just mocking out what would happen. So we go back. The one last step is that I had to set this question, that standalone question, as the exit question. So a little yellow folder. I selected it, save and exit, change it. If I deleted this, didn't have any question at all. It wouldn't show, there wouldn't be a gray, um, this, let's go back. the exit button wouldn't be at the top of the screen. So if this is blank, then there's no, then there is no exit option. But because I have an exit option, I filled it in, um, the exit shows at the top of the interview. So a couple considerations to think about. The exit to save is an optional feature. The A to J guided interview is short. It might be best for your users to complete that interview all at once. 
that's a decision you have to make as an author um, of whether you want to allow end users the option. In longer interviews, think about giving reminders about the ability to exit and save at the beginning of uh, new sections, or if you're about to ask them a bunch of information about their taxes and their income and their deductibles and all that stuff, maybe they're going to need to look that up somewhere, so maybe give them um, the option to exit there. And it takes multiple screens to register on LHI and then to save your answers. So you might want to include a brief explanation of the process. You can even include screenshots like I did in this presentation in the learn more section. Um, so as you're explaining it, it can pop up and show the end user exactly how, to, and how the process is going to work. It can also be unnerving for end users sometimes to be taken out of one um, screen, one inter the guided interview that they're in, and being taken to another website. So you probably want to warn them ahead of time. Also, you might want to include brief instructions on how to launch the guided interviews with the saved answer files when they actually want to return. So another learn more option. If um, you want to go back and work, and work through this again, you can always go to our A to J authoring guide. Chapter 7, pages 107 and 108, has information about setting a questions destination with buttons. You can go to a tutorial on creating buttons, which we'll talk about exiting to save um, in the authoring guide as well. And we have a couple of trainings and presentations on this on our a2jauthor.org website. So um, are there any questions at this time or anything you'd like me to go back over? If there is, just raise your hand and I will unmute you or put the questions in the question box. chance. Okay, I'm not seeing any questions right now, so um, they, uh, just a hint or a notice about the trainings that are upcoming. As you know, our new user workshops are the first Thursday of every month, and our advanced user workshops are on the third Thursday of every other month. So we have one coming up in June and the third Thursday. We have a live Ada J. Author and Hot Docs training at Chicago Kent in September. If you want to sign up, feel free to email me, and I can send you the link to um, Pro Bono's website where you can sign up. A big thank you to Callie for letting us use their GoToMeeting services. And if you have any other questions or feedback, feel free to reach out to me. My email is jbolek at kentlaw.iit.edu, and my phone number is there as well. Um, any questions with your projects or any problems you're having, always feel free to reach out. So thank you, and I will see you all next month.